Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll talk about Rule 2 of the responsibilities of the investigator according to good clinical practice. More after the break. Let's start with the second of the 12 rules, the first one you can find in the link above. Rule 2. Select, train, and log suitable study personnel and delegate study-related duties. The investigator has to log responsibilities, duties, signatures, and initials of the study personnel. It is important that current, signed, and dated CV of involved investigators and the entire trial staff are present, and that the team is kept informed about the current status of the course of the trial, amendments, and renewals at all times. Due to the fact that signatures and initials are verified during audits and inspections, the list must always be kept up to date. Here you see an example of a so-called delegation log. The investigator will receive such a document in one form or another for each study, and this form is used by the principal investigator to enter procedures the people involved are entitled to undertake within the study. In addition to the people involved in the study, such as study nurses, sub-investigators, possibly pharmacists, etc., the responsibilities of the people concerned also need to be listed here. The start-slash-stop date must be documented in the delegation log. Furthermore, the document needs to be continually updated because, for example, the composition of the study team changes frequently in university hospitals principal investigators and sub-investigators at university hospitals, for example, often change once a year. Each investigator must be trained and qualified before participating in the study. Nevertheless, in practice, unfortunately new investigators often start working, having already informed patients and documented data before the sponsor is informed about new personnel. As it is the responsibility of the sponsor only to involve qualified study personnel in a clinical study, it is necessary that staff changes are first reported to the sponsor. The new staff will get a study-specific training. Afterwards, the delegation log is updated and the new investigator can start working on the study. In some countries like in Germany, the suitability of each investigator even needs to be approved by the Ethics Committee. When the investigator is delegating, he makes sure that all people only perform activities they are entitled to. Unlike in the USA, in Europe, for example, a study nurse is generally not allowed to sign the informed consent form, depending on their level of training. Some study nurses may also not administer medication, and if they are allowed to do so, certain rules have to be complied with. In addition, the term study nurse is not legally protected consider what is permissible by professional law and what is not. Quite frequently, in private practices, the wife of an investigator is employed as a study nurse without having any medical education. Of course, she is only entitled to perform relatively few tasks. For example, she may document but not administer medication and may only be entrusted with drug accountability in exceptional cases. This point was augmented in the GCP regulation revision because the responsibility of a doctor acting as coordinating investigator or principal investigator was often not taken seriously enough or sufficiently documented. Here it is also necessary to document how the responsibility as principal investigator is really carried out. That means not only keeping the delegation log up to date and being responsible for a close-knit internal team, but also paying attention to the work of departments that may only assist the study team, but which deliver essential data for the study, such as radiology departments, the local pharmacy, or the local laboratory. For example, if the local laboratory is involved in a study and makes sure that the study doctor receives the study product on time, under controlled conditions, and in sufficient amounts to treat a study patient, the principal investigator is responsible that the pharmacy ensures proper documentation of its processes within the study. 
The pharmacy is the doctor's so-called subcontractor or vendor, and therefore it falls within the doctor's responsibility and must be monitored, checked, and, if necessary, managed by him. He needs to check and verify the qualifications of the pharmacy personnel and, if necessary, take responsibility for and correct any mistakes and introduce preventative measures to avoid the mistake in the future. So much about the Rule 2 for investigators. We will look into each rule in future videos, so stay tuned. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time.